Welcome to our lecture online. You may wonder why we call this a second order differential equation since we don't have a second derivative anywhere within the equation. But wait and see what happens. We're going to take our equation and we're going to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of the equation. When we do that, we get the following. We get r times the ddt of the current plus l times the ddt of the derivative of the current plus 1 over c times the ddt of the integral of the current. Oop, that should be t, not i. t times i dt, and that equals the derivative of the right side respect to time, of course. The derivative of 0 is still going to be 0. Now let's see what the equation looks like when we're done. Here, we end up with r times di dt plus l times the second derivative of i with respect to time. And here we can see that the derivative will negate the integral, and this becomes 1 over c times i equals 0. Now we need to go ahead and rearrange the equation, putting the second derivative first. And let's go ahead and do that. So we end up with L times the second derivative of I with respect to time plus R times the first derivative with respect to time plus 1 over C times I equals 0. And now it's beginning to look like a second order uh, differential equation. The next thing we want to do perhaps is get rid of the L over here. So we're going to divide everything in the equation by L. And let's see what we get. When we do that, we get the following. We get the second derivative of i with respect to time plus r over l times di dt. And then we get plus 1 over lc times i equals 0. And now you can clearly see that we have ourselves a second order differential equation of the current. And now all we have to do is solve this differential equation to solve for the circuit to see what the current looks like as a function of time in the circuit based upon this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. But maybe before we do, we probably need some initial conditions. So in the next video, we'll take a look at the initial conditions of the circuit and then we'll go ahead and solve our second order differential equation. That is how we do it.